Hello guys and welcome back to a new lesson. Well, today's lesson, as you can see, is not about writing, task one, task two, or vocabulary. It's about grammar. I know, grammar sucks. It's horrible. And I'm going to be the big bad wolf and I'm going to bring you uh, grammar lessons. And you know why? Because um, I've noticed that there's some recurring mistakes during the sessions, uh, the one-to-one -one sessions with my students, during the courses that I've been teaching. And I said, okay, why not? Let's have a go. Let's see which are the most common grammar mistakes and let's see how we can deal with them. And today is about dangling modifiers. I know it sounds really weird, okay? What's a modifier and why is it dangling? So get your notepad and let's get started. First of all, I would like you to have a look at this sentence. Having arrived at the store, there were no eggs. I'm going to give you a little bit of a hint. There's something wrong with this sentence. Something is not okay. And we're going to see exactly what's wrong with this kind of sentence. First of all, what is a modifier? Well, modifiers or descriptive words or phrases usually add a great deal of interest to a sentence and they're very important and they're actually a very important tool for descriptive writing because they engage um, the reader. However, when used improperly, modifiers can be quite confusing and sometimes they can distort the meaning of a sentence. So in this lesson, we're going to deal with this particular problem with our dangling modifiers. What's a modifier? Yeah, it's a word or a phrase that adds additional detail to a sentence. And they can be adjectives, adverbs, possessive pronouns or phrases. And they always, but they always, they must always modify or describe something in the sentence. And they usually describe a subject, a verb or an object. And here we have three modifiers, excited, quickly and yellow. And they each modify something, a noun, a verb and another noun. Yeah, they're all modifiers. Okay, but where should modifiers be placed? Okay, so we've got here two sentences, the happy girl and the girl was happy. So first of all, modifiers needs to be as close as possible to what they're modifying. And ideally, they should be directly next to the thing being modified, either before or after, sometimes with a helping verb. A helping verb, such as to be, it's an auxiliary verb. And here either order is acceptable since was is a helping verb that's considered part of the modifier. And adjectives like happy go before the thing they're modifying or after with a helping verb. Okay, this is with adjectives. What about adverbs? Well, adverbs can go either way, before or after the thing they're modifying. Yeah, we have ran quickly or quickly ran. Okay, fine. What about possessive pronouns? Well, they go before the thing they're modifying, again, or after, if we're talking about the helping verb. Here, the verb to be is a helping verb in the second sentence below. That is his toys, that toys is his. So here, um, the verb to be goes together with the a possessive pronoun. What about longer phrases? such as in this kind of situation. Well, phrases, they can go before or after the thing they're modifying, but it's the punctuation here is very important, usually with a comma or commas, you have to separate it. Alex, a refined painter, and usually in speech you make a little pause, or a refined painter, Alex, is known for his work. Okay, fine, so we know what modifiers are, we know the types of modifiers that we've got, where they should be placed. What in God's name is a dangling modifier? Well, first of all, dangling modifiers are bad. Bad, 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 bad. And it is actually a common grammatical mistake. And a dangling modifier is a modifier which appears in a sentence, but the sub subject being modified isn't there. Since there is no subject, the modifier hangs in empty space, dangling. Remember with the sentence with the eggs? Having a right of the store, there were no eggs. Obviously, the first one is correct and the second one is correct. 
is incorrect, sorry, and the second one is correct. But why is that? By the way, uh, full disclosure, I'm going to use 100% uh, Romanian names because we're in Romania, so I'm going to go wild. And in this situation, we need a subject, Aurel. So having arrived at the store, who has arrived at the store? Yeah, the phrase having arrived at the store should modify the person who arrived at the store. And since there is no person mentioned in the sentence, the first sentence, which is incorrect, isn't technically describing anything. So having arrived at the store is a dangling modifier. So the correct version of the same sentence is the second one. Having arrived at the store, Aurel discovered there were no eggs. Yeah, and now the sentence has a subject. Aurel, being described by the modifier. And the modifier is no longer dangling. Problem solved. Okay, we've got some examples of dangling modifiers. And the first one is the implied subject. Obviously, the first sentence is wrong. Without wanting to be rude, it was difficult to leave early. And when we have an implied subject, it is quite easy to miss a dangling modifier in a sentence that seems to imply a subject. And here, the intuitive meaning of the su sentence is very clear. But as written, the phrase is modifying it. Who is it? And since it does not clearly refer to any person who wanted to leave early without being rude, this is a dangling modifier. And the second one is the correct version. Yeah, again, we have another character here. Since Yonel didn't want to be rude, it was difficult for him to leave early. Yeah, so the beginning of the phrase is no longer a modifier. Instead, it's actually what? A dependent clause. A dependent clause means that you need extra information, otherwise it doesn't make sense. If you read it, since Yonel didn't want to be rude, it's like, okay. Dependent clause needs a, an independent clause or a main clause. A clause that explains why Matt did not want to leave early. And since it's no longer a modifier, it doesn't have to describe a subject. So it's no longer dangling. Okay, then we have a single word. Sometimes... Dangling modifiers consist of one single word. The first sentence, which obviously is incorrect, happy. There was singing the whole way to our grandparents' house. Okay, here happy has nothing to modify, it becomes a dangling modifier. And the correct version is the second one. We were happy and singing the whole way to our grandparents' house. So basically we handle a one word problem with a one word solution we have introduced the pronoun we. And this is the most important change in the sentence, that we added we, which provides a subject to happy, to be happy. All right, sometimes we have longer dangly modifiers, of course, because why not? And they can be actually more complex. And read the first one. Without considering the schedules of the people involved, the party was cancelled. Okay, here the modifier is actually most of the sentence, like 80% of the sentence, and is still dangling. And actually there's nothing in the sentence capable of consider anything. Considering what? So here's the fix. Yeah, the second one. Since the hosts failed to consider the schedules, schedules of other people involved, the party was cancelled. Okay, so regardless of size and significance, modifiers always need a subject to modify otherwise they dangle and here we have the hosts okay fine now we understand okay since we have identified the types of dangling modifiers how are we going to undangle our modifiers and don't beat yourself up okay dangling modifiers are a very common mistake in english however they're quite easy to fix all we have to keep in mind is that you need to keep your modifiers as close as possible to the thing modified and make sure they refer to something that's explicitly in the sentence. And I have prepared a little quiz for you, five sentences. You've got three minutes for this one. I would like you to read the sentences very carefully. Yeah, all modifiers in these sentences are dangling. You have to make a little bit of um, change to add subjects so they're not dangling. Okay, here we go.
Okay, time's up. These are the answers. Now let's see what the problem is with each of them. Working on my computer, the power went out. Yeah, who was working on my computer? The power? No. So while I was working on my computer, the power went out. Then the second one, when defrosted, Danley modifier, who was defrosted? What was defrosted? Meat, obviously. Marinated for half an hour and then you're ready to grill. The third one is really funny. Because if you read the sentence as it is, I smelled fresh flowers entering the reception hall. This means the actual activity of smelling flower. You pick up a flower, ah, oh, this smells beautiful. You picked up another flower, yeah, I smelled fresh flowers. So basically, all the way while entering the reception hall, you were just doing the action of smelling flowers. Whereas as I was entering the reception hall, I smelled fresh flower, but this time you're not actually doing the action, but you're using your nose, the organ, to sense, to perceive the smell of fresh flower. So it's a total different meaning here. The fourth one is really funny as well. When buying a car, and it feels like when you buy a car, variety, prices, and all add-ons options are basically you have to buy. Uh, you cannot buy variety, you cannot buy prices, and you cannot buy add-ons. So we change it a little bit. When buying a car, average buyer is usually confused by what? Variety, prices, and all the ads on. And the last one, on completing your group project, you might think, but you already have a pronoun there. Yeah, but that is a possessive, completing your group project. But who is completing the group project? After you complete the subject, your group project, your next assignment will be designing a web page. As I told you, it's not difficult. All you have to uh, do is to pay attention to make sure the modifiers are very close to the thing, person, place being modified. All right, and that's it. 
you have survived another lesson and this one was about grammar if you have any other problems with your grammar um, and you feel like hey you know what i feel that i'm making this mistake and i'm not really sure how to fix it then give me a thumbs up and drop uh, your suggestions in the comment section thank you very much for watching don't forget to follow me on my social media and also subscribe to my channel and i do hope i'm going to see as many of you next time when we meet have a glorious week ahead bye bye